Hey everyone, CNC Keith here with yet again another DIY CNC video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Acorn CNC 12 version 42.0, and then I'm going to go over how to upgrade your CNC configuration files with just a couple clicks from a previous version 4.18. And then I'm going to go over a couple of the new things that are in the new wizard in version 4.20. Alrighty, let's get started. The very first thing you want to do is make a report file, a report.zip file. And as you can see here, I have a running version of CNC 12 for Acorn version 4.18, and I have an Acorn Pro license installed. So the very first thing you want to do is go to the utility menu and hit F7 create report and navigate to where you want to store that report. Um, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Now what a report.zip file is, is a feature inside of CNC 12 that captures all the CNC configuration of this version of software that I'm running right now that's running the machine and puts it all in a zip file. That way if we ever had to install CNC 12 on another PC or replace the hard drive in this PC, I can quickly and easily get back right to the where I was right now which is hitting the restore report feature in the utility menu. This is a huge time saving feature. Now the report file can also be used to upgrade that same CNC configuration to a new version of software and I'll be showing you that here just in a little bit in this video. So now that we've got our report file saved, it's often a good idea to save that in multiple locations. So right now I just saved it to the desktop of this machine. Save it out to a thumb drive or another hard drive that's off of this CNC PC for safekeeping. Alrighty, the next thing I want to do is shut down CNC 12 and navigate to the C drive on the CNC control computer and since we have a mil CNC 12 mil installation, there's a folder in the C drive called CNC M, and that's for CNC mil. That's where CNC 12 lives, uh, this, the milling version of CNC 12. And what I want to do is right click on that in Windows here and rename it. So you can name it anything you want, but it's a good idea to rename it. Uh, the version that it is. So effectively what I'm doing is I just made a copy of that because what I'm going to do next is install version 4.20 which is also going to put a folder called CNCM there. So by renaming this the new installation will not write on top of the files that are there which is a no-no for a couple of different reasons. Um, so another, if you're really cautious, another cool thing you can do is right click, click copy and copy this entire folder out to a thumb drive or a hardware, hard drive on a network, etc. Just to have an additional copy of that because if you ever had to, you could just copy that whole directory right back in here and rename it CNCM and start CNC 12 and you would be right back where you were. So it's super user friendly to backdate um, CNC 12 if necessary. Alrighty, so we've got the CNC M file uh, renamed and the next thing is I went ahead and downloaded the latest version 4.20 um, zip file off the Centroid website and I went ahead and unzipped the zip file and what you get is the folder and inside that folder you get a uh, executable here called setup.exe. Let's double click on that. Windows is going to complain, hey, I don't recognize this piece of software. Well, that's because we didn't register CNC 12 with Microsoft. So you click more info and then run anyways. And it's going to throw up another warning saying, hey, do you really want to do this? I'm going to click yes. And the CNC 12 installer starts. Here we go, which is pretty standard stuff here. And you're going to notice uh, some little changes here over 418. And that change is right here. In the beginning of the installation, 4.20 actually asks you whether you want to use inches or millimeters in the beginning. So you pick what you want and click install. You can always change that later, but that's what we went with here.
Alrighty, once the uh, installer file is done, you click Next and Finish, and now we get an icon on the screen. When we double click this, we'll start the new version. So one of the things is I'm running an Ether 16.16 on this install, and it's saying, hey, your Ether 16.16 setup is different with this version of 4.20 than it was with 4.18, and I just click, yep, no problem, I realize that continue on. Alrighty, 4.20 just started and the other thing, just like always, uh, when you install a new version of Acorn CNC 12, it automatically upgrades the firmware on the Acorn. And so there's a little message there saying, you know, MPU updating firmware, do not power off, absolutely do not power off the Acorn board when that's going on. Let it do its thing. Uh, I do want to mention is sometimes after it's done updating the firmware and it tries to start CNC 12 for the very first time, you might get a calm error message. And if you do, just close that and restart CNC 12 and it works every time after that. But th in this instance here, I did not get that calm message. Alrighty, when you uh, first install, do a fresh install of CNC 12, it, def it loads a default set of configurations and that's what's running right now. And it's giving me this emergency stop detected because it loads the default bench test configuration. Well, I actually have an input connected to uh, uh, input eight. And so it's complaining that my e-stop is detected when it really isn't. So what we want to do is there's two ways to go. I could actually proceed with the update. So I could use that report.zip that we made in the beginning of this video to update all the CNC control configuration in, in just a couple clicks, or you could proceed with what I call a fresh installation. So let's just do the fresh, fresh install first. So I'm gonna click utility and then Acorn wizard to start the wizard. Alrighty, the wizard starts and the very first thing you wanna do is pick axis drive type. So these are a bunch of standard um, axis motor drive types um, that we have developed and sorted out and tested thoroughly and all these drive types like it says here in this menu have corresponding acorn hookup schematics so download the schematics if you haven't already and open them up and you'll notice that every single one of these entries has a matching schematic so if i'm running a g540 in drive only mode which i am you click on that click load drive and click yes now what it does is it automatically configures the inputs and outputs to match the schematic of G540 drive only. And that gets you the base functionality up and running. Um, the rest of these menus are very similar to the old wizard. Um, the homing and travel menu looks a little bit different and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, and the rest of them look very similar, so I'm not going to go over them in detail. The big changes are in the input and output menus. So before we had a drop down menu and now we have a new drag and drop style menu. And we did that to facilitate the ability to add lots of inputs and outputs. So let's say for instance, and what we've done here on the input type is we categorize them. So rather than putting them all in one big list, we put all the home related inputs in the home screen, et cetera, the home drop down here. So I really like home all and I always put home all on number one. So how I assign number one input on Acor to be home all is I simply click and drag what I want out of the list over here. Um, this is pretty cool. If I, I can actually drag around, let's say I wanted it on input three, I just click and drag it to the input that I want home all to be on. If I accidentally clicks and drag something into the Acorn integrated outputs list that I don't want, then all you gotta do is click on it and drag it out of the box anywhere and it snaps back to this menu, which is pretty cool. So I do have, as I mentioned, Ether 1616 connected up here and running. And I'm going to go ahead and just assign a bunch of limit switches, which is a common use of the Ether 1616. If you like to put individual limit switches in both directions on all axes, uh, the Ether 1616 gives you plenty of inputs to do that on. So whoops there, I accidentally grabbed limit all, just don't do that. There you go. 
And if you want to change the input here um, in the old menu, you would change the input from a normally closed to a normally open. It would be over here and you would change it from NC to NO. That same functionality is right here. You just click the number and it changes from green to red like the legend here is implying that if those home all switches are normally open switches, you want this on red. I always use normally closed limit and home switches, so I want it on green. Okay, that's it in a nutshell. The uh, output menu works in a very similar fashion. So um, I always put no fault out on number eight and spin forward and reverse. Here I do my drive reset out on five and for a milling machine I put mist and flood on those two right there. And if I want any outputs on the Ether 1616, um, like axis brake, let's say I had uh, brake motors on all four axes, that would be a rare thing. But uh, there are this is new in 420 that you have individual uh, axis um, brake outputs as long as well as individual axis drive OK. So if you wanted to have individual drive OK signals so that you can identify which drive is complaining that it's having an issue that it's it, this is the drive fault signal from the drive so you can have individuals where previously in 418 all those signals were combined into one input since acorn was limited to eight inputs and now of course with ether 1616 you can have up to three ether 1616s connected to an acorn so you can have up to 56 inputs and outputs um, connected to the ether, uh, con connected up to the Acorn, so three Ether 1616s in total. Alrighty, and just like before, once you have uh, the system configured the way you want, you press right settings, the CNC control, and follow the instructions on the screen. It says, "Hey, we're gonna create a new PLC program," and you go OK, and it's asking me to reboot. So I'm powering off Acorn and the Ether 1616 at the same time, and I left the um, router, the, the switch, the Ether, Ethernet switch powered on. And that just facilitates uh, not having to reboot the switch, which makes quick rebooting is why I'm doing that. Already, once I get a heartbeat, I notice, okay, I got a heartbeat on the Acorn, and I click OK. Now it's going to reboot CNC 12 with all those changes that I made. And let's test and see if my e-stop works. Okay, my e-stop is working fantastic. And I could push cycle start. And there I have an Axis 3 drive fault. Well, that's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Because guess what? I assigned that input to look for that input. But I don't got anything wired to that input. So let's go back and change that real quick and get rid of those and I'll show you that so I just dragged them off of there and now I'm going to reboot one more time turn power cycling acorn and ether 1616 now I'm waiting for a heartbeat Okay, got a heartbeat. So doing a fresh install is actually really easy. It's no big deal to come back into the wizard and do that. But, um, you know, if you have a lot of particular settings and you had everything set up just the, the way you wanted, um, it sure is easy to use a report.zip. So let us let me show you right now how to update 4.20, you notice it says 4.20 right there. Notice it says Acorn free because on a fresh install, you have to reinstall your license file. But if I use that report.zip file I made, it'll automatically stuff all my CNC configuration and my license file back where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit utility, restore report. Now remember I saved it to the desktop. So let's navigate to the desktop. There it is, hit okay and follow the instructions on the screen. So it's asking me to power cycle the Acorn board after the report. I'm doing that right now. I'm power cycling again, Acorn and Ether 1616 at the same time. I'm leaving the Ethernet switch on 
and I'm waiting for a heartbeat. Okay, I got a heartbeat. Now I can start CNC 12. It says, hey, your settings for Ether 1616 have changed. I'm going to say, yeah, I know. No problem. All righty, you can see things looked a little different because in, ver in the version 4.18, I was running, the system was set up as a four axis CNC control. So very first thing I know notice here is I got my W axis back. Let's go check to see if my report file, yep, there you go. My report, uh, my, excuse me, my uh, license file has shown back up. So I'm running Acorn Pro without having to reinstall the license. Now you have to, it looks like you're kind of done at this point, but you're not, you gotta go back into the wizard and you're gonna get this pop-up message right here. It says, hey, we've noticed a change here. So what the wizard is noticing is that we're using a report file from an older version of software and it's going to bring that CNC configuration in and then update it for us so it matches the new version. So what you wanna do is hit update wizard. It says, okay. And now you can come in here and check all these settings to make sure that your turns ratios and steps per rev and travel and all that kind of good stuff looks familiar. And then you want to hit right settings of CNC control. And let me just notice, uh, let me just point something out here that you might have noticed on the uh, access drive type screen. Look at this under custom, it says previous version. What's going on here? is the wizard has imported your access drive type from 4.18 and converted it into this new format that we're using in version 4.20. So on the right hand side of the screen is all the information that it has pulled out of the report.zip file and it created a new drive type for you here called previous version. So you can do a couple different things. You could um, rename this if you wanted. But we're going to go ahead and stick with this in previous version doesn't bother me i'm not going to rename it and what we want to do at this point is simply hit right settings of cnc control and the new 4.20 wizard will write all the settings to cnc 12 based on the 4.18 report file and bring everything up to date so everything's going to work good so i went ahead and power cycled one more time following the instructions on the screen and I'm waiting for a heartbeat. Here we go. I've got a heartbeat and we're all done here. We just updated from 4.18 to the latest version of CNC 12 Acorn software, version 4.20. Let's check it out. Yep, there's my pro license. Everything's good. Let's home her out and move some motors. All righty, looking good. We got motor movement, fantastic. So that's it in a nutshell. Let me know if you have any questions. Please post questions on the forum and good luck with your projects.